One of the most common questions that we get amongst our community, especially beginning students, is how do I do the breath? And before I answer how do I do the breath, let's talk about why you do the breath and what are the reasons for doing it. So the purpose of the breath is to pull the mind out of the body, to take all of the energy that exists in our first three centers, the energy that we use to create a life, or that sexual energy, all the energy that we use to digest the meal, all the energy that we use to overcome some threat or challenge in our environment, all that energy that's resting in our first three centers, and draw that energy back up into the brain. Now, think about this. Most people's consciousness, most people's energy, most people's thoughts and feelings are continuously sending energy in the form of thought. Now remember, every thought has a frequency, every thought has an energy, every thought is carried on an energy, information is carried on a frequency, that every thought you think is producing an energetic field. So most people's thoughts are connected to their first three centers, and the first three centers are the centers of survival. So whether you're thinking thoughts about your sexual identity or sexual fantasies, whether you're thinking thoughts that have to do with pain and suffering, guilt and shame and unworthiness, whether you've been thinking thoughts of anger, aggression, judgment, fear, um, hatred, anger, frustration, those thoughts produce certain chemicals in the brain called neuropeptides. Those chemicals then begin to signal different hormonal centers and those centers fill with energy. Just like when you have a sexual thought, all of a sudden, if you're having a sexual fantasy, certain neuropeptides are released to signal your first center and all of a sudden you get energy moving into that center. And now once energy is in that center, you're admitting information out from that center into the field. So, but if people are thinking certain thoughts, whether it's sexual thoughts or thoughts that are related to suffering or pain or guilt or shame or thoughts that are related to frustration or anger or aggression, those thoughts then produce certain chemicals that begin to signal certain hormonal centers for you to feel a certain way. Once you feel that feeling, and now you're feeling angry or suffering or sexual or whatever, the very feeling that you're feeling is going to influence more of the same thoughts, which will produce the same chemicals. And all of a sudden, people get caught in these loops that become their state of being. In other words, they're taking thought in the form of an emotion and storing it as energy in these first three centers. So the majority of our energy is sitting in our first three centers and very little in the centers that are above the first three centers. So then the repetition of this cycle over time is conditioning the body to become the mind of that emotion. So we have all this creative energy stored in our first three centers and 95% of who we are becomes a set of subconscious emotional reactions, behaviors, habits, hardwired programs in which the body has been conditioned to become the mind. So then when we live by these centers in our daily life, these first three centers of survival are energy consumers. In other words, when there is a sexual release, when you are consuming and breaking food down into energy, when you're running from a predator or you're facing a threatening or challenging situation in your life, you're drawing from this invisible field of energy and you're turning that life force into chemistry and all of a sudden you're diminishing the field around your body. What's the relevance of that? Well, it makes sense. Now you're becoming more matter and less energy, more particle and less wave. And the very chemicals cause us to feel separation or disconnected from the field called the quantum field. So then your body is a magnet. You have a, a north pole called the head and the south pole called the base of your spine. And in most organisms, uh, the research has shown that the positive charge being at the head and the negative charge being at the tail is just like a magnet. And a magnet has an invisible electromagnetic field that runs around it. You can't see it, but literally 
metal shavings that are placed in that field will organize itself themselves into that field. So then if you're drawing from this invisible field and turning it into chemistry and you're diminishing that field around your body and the cycle of thinking and feeling is consuming energy and you're taking this thought in the form of energy and storing it emotionally in your body then it makes sense then you're taking this energy and storing it in the body number one you're diminishing the polarity between your head and tail and you're diminishing the field around your body so now instead of being a magnet like the body should be it's like a piece of metal that's no longer a magnet it's inert and it has no charge so then how do we begin to pull the mind out of the body and liberate that creative energy back into the field and the breath is the way we do that so then inside your spinal column and your skull is fluid that's a closed system it's called cerebral spinal fluid and that fluid is made of proteins and salts and solution and when you inhale and you exhale there's a natural mechanism that's like a pump when you take a normal breath and you inhale the sutures of your skull open up and at the same time the bone at the base of your spine called the sacrum bone an upside down triangle opens up like this so the skull bones open up and the sacrum flexes back and it drains that cerebral spinal fluid down when you exhale those sutures close and the sacrum flexes forward and the closing of that system begins to propagate a wave and pump that fluid up so if you were to follow one molecule of cerebral spinal fluid from somebody who's just resting in their normal day it would take 12 hours by just normal breathing for that molecule of cerebral spinal fluid to go all the way up into the brain, pass through the four cerebral aqueducts, the four chambers, the ventricles, and come all the way down. So the natural movement of the cerebral spinal fluid, in one day, uh, it moves twice through this system. So then, when we do the breath, and we have a passion, an intention to pull the mind out of the body, and that we use a level of energy that's greater than the conditioning process of living by the same cycle of thinking and feeling that we make up our mind that we want to free ourselves from those emotions we are freeing ourselves from the past because if the emotion is stored in the body then the body is in the past so then this is not a passive breath as we inhale through our nose the act of inhale by volition, combined with the contraction of these intrinsic muscles. Now, what do I mean by intrinsic muscles? Let's talk about the muscles that are related to these first three centers. The muscles that you use for elimination, both urination and defecation. The muscles that you use for intercourse. The muscles that you have control over. Every single day that you've been using them that way, we're going to use those same muscles but we're going to use them differently. So then you have a lot of creative energy in the first center, enough energy to make a baby, but we're not going to release this energy out. We're going to coax it up into the brain. So as you sit up straight and open up this channel to the brain, in one slow, steady breath, as you inhale, you're going to lift those muscles, perineum front and back up at the same time. So as you inhale now, you're pulling that energy and contracting these muscles and you're locking that first center down and you're squeezing and you're milking this energy out of there. So it goes first center, then you follow your breath into the second center and as you follow your breath into the second center, now you lock this one down. And the way you lock it down is you pull in your belly button close to your spine you pull it in so then inhale first center then you pull in the second center you're still hold, following your breath slowly and steadily and then you pull it up into your upper abdomen and you're locking down the center here now you're squeezing all three of these lower centers and when you squeeze these muscles you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up you follow your breath up into your chest shoulders down you follow it through your throat straighten your spine you follow it all the way up to the top of your head now where you place your attention is where you place your energy so you want that energy to move right to the top of your head so then as you inhale you bring that energy all the way up to the top you keep following your breath you lock all the way to the top when you get to the top now you hold your breath and when you hold your breath you contract those intrinsic muscles and you begin to lift those muscles up and you begin to compress those muscles 
and you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up into your brain. Now, cerebral spinal fluid is made of charged molecules, proteins and salts in solution. And when you accelerate charged molecules by physics, you create an invisible field called an inductance field that moves in the direction of the charged molecule. If you have several charged molecules moving in a certain direction, you create a more forceful or bigger inductance field. So then as you inhale and you follow that breath all the way up to the top, as you accelerate the cerebral spinal fluid and you begin to move these molecules, as they start to accelerate, they start to create this invisible inductance field. And if you create that field, all of a sudden that energy, all the energy you use to make a baby, all the energy to digest the food, all the energy to run from a stressful reaction in your life or react to a, something st stressful in your world, instead of it being released out, you're pulling it up. And as you begin to move this energy, there comes a moment where the energy all of a sudden releases back up into the brain. And when it releases back up into the brain, you switch on that system called the sympathetic nervous system. Now, most of the time when the sympathetic nervous system switches on, you're usually either having an orgasm or you're reacting to some threat in your outer world. But now, the arousal that's taking place when the sympathetic nervous system switches on is going to ejaculate that energy. The sympathetic nervous system is going to drive that energy right up into the brain. And when it reaches this gate right at your brainstem called the thalamic gate, all of a sudden that gate opens up and that energy travels right into each individual thalamus, one on each side, that signals higher centers in the brain and the brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns. There's a high arousal. And now you are super conscious or super aware. In other words, energy is going back from where it came from, back into the brain. And energy is being delivered back to the brain and you will experience a euphoria, a bliss, a lightness. For some it'll be very severe, uh, others it'll be very minor, but the act of doing it all of a sudden is going to coax that energy back into the brain. Now once the brain moves into gamma, all at the same time this is all happening, that energy begins to hit the pineal gland right between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Once that energy hits the pineal gland, all of a sudden the pineal gland then begins to upgrade melatonin. All of a sudden it begins to make sister molecules, derivatives, metabolites of melatonin that fit into the same receptor sites as serotonin and melatonin. But now they're carrying a very different message. Now they're, you're making very powerful antioxidants. Now melatonin is already an antioxidant, but now you're making a very profoundly powerful antioxidant. You're producing a chemical in the brain called the benzodiazepine. Now melatonin already relaxes us, but now you're going to create a Valium-like substance that is going to sedate the survival centers in your brain. And you're going to be able to relax fully into the present moment. No, no more living in survival. The, the chemicals then that mutate or transmute into the same chemicals found in hibernating animals begin to produce a loss of sex drive, a loss of interest in appetite. It begins to uh, turn off your preoccupation with the outer world. The first three centers shut off. Now the body goes into stasis. We lose our drives. That's important if the body has been conditioned to be the mind. It makes chemicals that cause a very profound electrical charge in the brain, high amplitudes of energy the same type of chemicals that an electric eel produces. Now, the nervous system is amplified. It's drawing, it's creating more energy. And then it produces a very profound chemical that causes profound mystical moments. In other words, melatonin already helps us to dream, but now you are gonna be lucid dreaming. And when this system switches on, this latent system switches on, all of a sudden now, the thinking neocortex, the analytical mind, is going to be anesthetized. It's going to be sedated. So then, why do I ask you to inhale and hold your breath? Now, this is an inhaling and turning purple and pushing. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. It's a slow, steady breath, and you follow that breath all the way to the top, either to the top of your head, or you put your awareness on where that pineal gland is between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Now, when you inhale, that inhalation is very slow and very steady. It's not a big inhalation and pushing. 
It's a slow, steady breath, and you're contracting these muscles and coordinating it. You're following your breath all the way to the top of your head. And when you get to the top of your head, I'm going to ask you to inhale a little bit more. And as you pull up, you're going to lock these muscles down even further, and you're lifting them up. Once you lift them up and you have your attention either on the top of your head or the, the space that your pineal gland occupies in space, I'm going to ask you to lock those muscles down and pump, squeeze, or push. And I want you to push that fluid up into your brain by squeezing the muscles. Not by holding your breath harder, but by squeezing those muscles. And I want you to begin to pump that fluid and begin to compress up against your pineal gland. 